Let's continue our conversation with Middle East expert Waleed Ferris, Skyping in from Washington, D.C. this morning. Waleed, you said something before the break that I think deserves some elaboration and amplification, and that is the role uh, Iran is playing, whether it's ISIS or Hamas or a variety of these different terror groups. Iran, what, trying to wash its hands or put some distance between itself and those groups as the Iranians are trying to get some sort of nuclear accommodation with us? Yes, the Iranian leadership is taking advantage of the fact that we are busy with ISIS and our public opinion now is putting pressure on us. And of course, our associates and allies uh, in the region wants us to do uh, you know, strikes against ISIS and help them. So we are so much focusing on ISIS that the Iranian regime is doing whatever it wants, bypassing the nuclear deal. But get the, getting influence inside Iraq, inside Syria, inside Lebanon. And of course, the Congressman, remember that last week, the Iranian uh, pro-Iranian militia in Yemen is now threatening Saudi Arabia. And for the Iranians to be able to do this, the best thing that they can do is flare up the situation between Gaza and Israel, because then the entire international community is going to go and try to fix another ceasefire. So my sources in the Middle East are telling me that those uh, pinpointed attacks against the Israelis are manipulated by Hamas, which is an associate of Iran. Well, this adds a new wrinkle entirely in terms of uh, what is happening there. And as you mentioned, the response from the press, which has uh, uh, been so tough on the Israelis worldwide. It's interesting when we take a look at Israel and the fact that there is a tolerant environment for freedom of religion, uh, not only obviously being the Jewish state, but for the Arabs who dwell there and for Christians with Iran, uh, pardon me, with, well, yeah, with Iran threatening Israel, with all that is going on with Israel, uh, does this jeopardize further Christians in the Middle East in terms of persecution? Look, the Middle East Christians are jeopardized by essence. They don't need uh, to have an Iranian-Israeli tension or other tensions. The forces that are threatening the Christians in the Middle East, take, for example, Christians in Iraq, ISIS is there. Whatever Iran is going to do, ISIS has a target to eliminate the Assyrian Christians, the Chaldean, the Syriacs. In Syria, for example, ISIS is going after them, but at the same time, the Iranians have been persecuting the Christians and suppressing them politically. The Assad regime has done 15 years of blasting and killing and massacring and shelling against the Christians of Lebanon. 120,000 Christians in Lebanon have been killed uh, at the hands of the, uh, the Assad regime. So the Christians, unfortunately, across the board, if you add the Christians of Egypt, the Copts who have been persecuted by the Muslim Brotherhood, they have it, I mean, as, as, as negative as one can think, regardless of who's playing against whom in the Middle East. And they need to be addressed by the United Nations, by the U.S., the international community, and United Nations. They need to have solutions for these Christian minorities in the Middle East to be protected. Waleed, uh, it was now a couple of months ago when we talked about the plight of the Yazidis. You had been in contact with the leadership on the mountaintop waiting for help. What situation do the Yazidis find themselves in now in terms of being targeted by ISIS and trying to seek some relief. What's going on? Congressman, since that phone call, uh, I followed very uh, closely what happened with the Yazidis. I actually advised a federation of NGOs, including Yazidis and other Christian minorities. Uh, we went to the United Nations, the Security Council, and there we called very clearly on the UN to create a safe zone for the Yazidis and for the Christians in the Nineveh Valley and the Sinjar Mountain. Unfortunately, it did not happen. And now the Yazidis, there are a few thousands still resisting on that mountain. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Yazidis are now dispersed in Kurdistan, and there is no real support for the Yazidis to form their own homeland or their own district. And this is where the attention of the U.S. government should be, to help the minorities of Iraq, the weakest and the most targeted, targeted of all communities in Iraq at this point in time. Well, uh, Waleed, we always appreciate your assessments. It, it's tough to hear about the plight of the Yazidis, but uh, we do appreciate the fact that you are on top of this and in turn helping us stay on top of it. As always, sir, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Straight ahead, hour two of America's Forum. We'll talk with United States Senator David Vitter of Louisiana and have more for you coming right up.